Hi everyone, welcome to my second of two videos on this, the Olympus Pen F. This video, in the first video, we talked about what everything is and a little bit about the camera. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use all of the different stuff on this camera, okay? Let's start with lens mounting and unmounting. As we saw in the first video, this is an interchangeable lens camera, meaning the lens can come off and a different one can be put back on. So let's see how to do that. If you have a lens that's on, you can see there's this little button here that says L on it. You just push that in, and now you're going to rotate clockwise, and then the lens comes off. To put the lens back on, we're going to find this red dot. We're going to match it up with this red dot. So red dot on the flange to red dot on the lens. Just set the lens in place and turn it counter or anti-clockwise. You might have heard a little click there. Let's do that again so you can hear the click. That click lets you know that the lens is in place and it's not just going to fall off on its own. The next thing we're going to do is load and unload film. We're going to load it. I'm going to show you how it moves through the camera and then we're going to unload it. So to load film, we just want to open up the camera back. There we go. So with the camera back open, now we take our film. We're just going to drop it in like this. We're going to put the film rewind knob into place. Now we're going to pull out a leader. We're going to look for this little slit right here. Feed it in. We're going to activate the shutter so that we can advance the film. Okay, everything's working. This is the point at which you close the, f the film, uh, film back. And now you take pictures, take pictures until this says one. Now watch this as we advance the film. As you can see, this was turning as we advanced the film. Now we're at one. So this camera is ready to go to take pictures. I'm going to open up the film back. Now in real life, don't actually do this. Film is one and done. So when it sees light, it's ruined, it's exposed, or it has an image and it's not, ex and it, it's not ruined. But I want to show you what happens inside your camera as you take pictures. So as you might be able to see, this has more film on it than it did when we closed the camera. So when everything's closed, this little silver bit right here presses down on the, the, the film cassette like this, and the film pressure plate rests right here, and so the film passes through. That's a terrible noise my fingers on this, not the camera. The camera sounds fine. Pa passes through flat on plane and the, the, the shutter, which is right here, opens, the light hits the, the film, the image is made. You can't see it if you open up the back of the film. You cannot see the image until it goes through chemistry, so don't open it to see what your, your film, film's images look like. And then you take the next pic, you, you advance it, and it's ready to take the next picture. So you've gone through all 24 frames, that means 48 pictures on this roll. You've, you've shot 48 half frame images. To rewind your film, what you would do is you would push down here and then you flip out the film rewind knob and you just start rewinding. Let me show you what that does inside the camera. Again, don't, remember, don't open up your film back until you've got the film all the way back inside the cassette. So as you rewind the film, it rewinds into the cassette. Now listen for this sound. That sound you just heard is the sound of the film popping off of the rewind spool. And that means it's time to finish rewinding. So you would actually rewind it all the way into the cassette if you were doing this um, in real life, but I'm going to reuse this film in other videos. So I'm going to leave a little bit out. Then you, you take the film out, you send it off to the lab to be processed, or you take it to develop it yourself. And uh, if you want to load another roll of film, you do that right now. One of the great things about this camera not having a light meter is it doesn't have a battery to change, it doesn't have a battery to leak. You also don't have a light meter. 
So there's that. It does still have the ability to use a flash. We have a PC port on the side right here, and that PC port will allow you to use a standard modern X flash, Xenon, any, any flash you could go to the store and buy, you could plug into here with a PC port cable and use that flash. And as I mentioned in the first video, the flash syncs at any shutter speed this camera has. In fact, there was a really interesting thing I, I read researching this camera that said the only way to use a Nikon lens at a 1 500th flash sync speed is to put it onto a Nikon to pen adapter and use a pen. That seems like a lot of work to sync a lens at a very high fat flash sync, but to each their own. Let's take a look through the viewfinder of this camera now and we'll see what we're looking at. Okay, so here's the viewfinder. And as you can see, it's uh, pretty spartan. There's uh, just a plain mat with a, fo with a composition ring in the center. And that's it. In terms of viewfinders, this is the height of simplicity. And uh, of the two types of viewfinders, I really, really like a grid and a plain mat. A plain mat is a, a fantastic viewfinder. I like the grid slightly more, but a plain mat is a very close second for me. And uh, this has a very nice plain mat viewfinder. It's very good for uninterrupted and unobstructed image composition. So now that we've seen all of these different things about this ca camera, let's put this all together and I'm going to show you how to take a picture with the Pen F. This is going to include a couple of things we haven't really seen that much of yet, so, so bear with me and I'll show you the process. So you've got your subject that you want to take a picture of. Great, excellent. If you have a handheld light meter or a light meter app on your smartphone, you can use that to figure out what your exposure should be, or you can use the Sunny 16 rule, which is your film's ISO rating. Let's say 200 is what we're using today. So 1 250th on your shutter speed is as close to 200 ISO as you're gonna get. At F16, for a subject in full sun, not the sun itself, don't point your camera at the sun, you'll go blind. And that's a serious one. That's not like what your mom or grandma used to tell you about things you did in the bathroom when you were a kid go, making you go, you go blind. Legitimately, you will go blind if you point your camera at the sun. So don't do it. And what I mean a, a subject in full sun, what I mean is something like a sidewalk would work or a tree. And you take a meter reading off of that and it should say at F16, 200 ISO film, one two hundredth of a second. So this F Sunny 16 rule is F16, shutter speed closest to your ISO, sub subject in full sun. What if it's in shade? F8. What if it's indoors? F4, maybe F2.8, maybe F2 if it's really dark. Okay, so we have a subject in shade we want to take a picture of, so we know that it's about F8. Great. And what you'll notice as I'm adjusting this aperture ring, you don't hear any clicking. This aperture ring's been declicked. That's not the way most of them work. Okay. So F8, because it's in shade. We're using 200 ISO film, so 1 250th. We're going to focus the lens to get our subject in focus. Great. There we go. They're in focus. Take the picture. We've just taken a picture with the pen F. Now let's take a look at some of the other things that we can do with this as we're taking a picture. Let's say we want to take another picture of the same subject, but you know, F8 might be kind of a deep depth of field. We could go down to F5.6 and 1 500th of a second. 1 500th at F5.6 is the same amount of light as 1 250th at F8. So we have the same focus. There we go. We take our picture again. Well, okay, maybe I was wrong. Maybe we actually need a lot more depth of field. So let's go up to F16. Well, 1 500th at F5.6 is the same as 1 250th at F8, as 1 1 25th at F11, and 1 60th at F16. We've taken our picture. Okay, I've been wrong about all of this. I really don't know how much depth of field I need. So let's set it at, one, at F5.6. How do I figure that out ahead of time? 
Well, there's this button right here. This button right here is your depth of field preview. So if you push it, you can see the aperture closes down. So when you're looking through your lens and you push that button, your viewfinder will get much darker, but you'll be able to see, at least get an idea of what your depth of field will look like. So if you stop it down to f16, you can see the aperture stops way down, gets very tiny. If you only have it at f2.8, you can see there's still a fairly large opening back there. So if you're trying to figure out what aperture you should use, you can always use your depth of field preview to get a sense of your depth of field. The other thing you can do is look at the depth of field gauge on top of your lens. So here we have our depth of field gauge. You can see numbers going out. The, the red indicator is what you are focused on. So right now I am focused at two feet, okay, or just shy of 0.7 meters. 4, 8, and 16, you can see them moving out evenly from this red line. Now, what those 4, 8, and 16 mean are that if I'm at f4, everything from 2 feet to 2 feet will be in focus. At f8, a little bit more. At f16, everything from 0.5 to 0.7 or 0.75 meters will be in focus. If I went here and I set infinity at 16, then everything from four feet or about one and a quarter meters up to infinity will be in focus at f16. At f8, everything from infinity down to a little bit less than three meters, so let's call that seven feet, would be in focus. So this, these numbers on your lens correspond with the aperture numbers here to tell you how much is in focus when you're going to take a picture. So if you have a subject who's four feet away and you're at f5, 6, the numbers will be just slightly beyond the fours there. So everything from a little bit more than three feet to a little bit less than six and a half or a little bit more than one meter to a little bit less than 1.5 should be in focus. You'll also notice there's a little R here. That's for infrared film. You probably won't shoot with it, but if you do shoot with infrared film at any point, what you need to do is focus on your subject. Let's say they're one meter from you. Then before you take the picture, refocus your one meter mark to the R so that your infrared film focuses, at, or infrared light rather, focuses at a different plane than visual light, visible light to us. So, you have to readjust your focus on your, in your lens uh, to get the infrared light to focus correctly on your film plane, and that's what the R indicates. So we've seen lots and lots and lots of things about how to take a picture with this camera. What about a double exposure? Okay, double exposures are a bit of a pain, but let's say that you're going to do a double exposure. Okay, taking our meter reading, it's 1 1 25th at f5, 6. Okay, great. You don't want to put twice the amount of light on the frame by shooting two frames at this setting, so we're going to cut the amount of light in half by going to 1 2 50th of a second. We're going to take our first frame. Okay, there we go. Now what you want to do is you want to hold this, hold the film rewind button, and advance the film at the same time. <laughs> and that is as hard as it looks. <laughs> So, um, realistically, if you want to do double exposures, because after you've done that, now that holds the film in place while you advance it, then you can take your second frame and move on. Then you have to take a dead frame with the lens cap on this because it will take a second for the film to start moving once you advance it again. And you'll have overlapping frames if you don't take a dead frame in between the double exposure and the next frame. So you put your lens cap on and take a dead frame. So, Olympuses have never really been double exposure friendly cameras. None of them are. So if you really, 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 really want to do, do double exposures, I'd suggest getting a different camera than this one. You can do it. It's one of the easiest Olympuses to do it with, but you still have to hold it at all kinds of weird angles and then doing the double stroke advance as you try to do a double exposure. It's, it's just, it's a lot of work for that. So there are better, much easier cameras to do double exposures with, specifically anything which has a shutter which is uncoupled 
from the Film Advance, meaning that the Film Advance does not rearm the shutter. That is my video series on the Olympus Pen F. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, please leave those in the comments section. I'm pretty good about responding fairly quickly. If you have ideas for future videos, please let me know. I, uh, if I have the equipment and technical know-how, I'm more than happy to make those. If you'd like to subscribe, you can just click the subscribe button. And one last thing, thank you guys for watching. But Cheever, I love you, puppy. You're a good boy, puppy. You're a good boy. Good boy. I love you. Lie down, Cheever. Lie down. Lie down. Cheever, lie down. Please, puppy. You are breathing into the microphone. And you're about to you're about to whack everything with your tail. And you just licked my glasses. Thank you, puppy. Thank you for licking my glasses. I needed another excuse to clean them.